Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Spigoon, thank all of you for staying here. I know how exhausted all of us are. And I particularly want to thank the many women here because it's cold in here. It's freezing. <laughs> yeah, it's freezing. It's cold anyway. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Jackson Lee was smart enough to bring a blanket. It's <laughs> uh, a good thing. Uh, while we're talking guns, one of the great ironies and hypocrisies that I find again and again is that the NRA always says, we just want to keep guns out of the hands of criminals and the dangerously <laughs> mentally ill. And we don't need any new gun laws. We just need to enforce the laws that are already on the books. My, my Virginia colleague, Bob Goodlatte, chairs the House Judiciary Committee. And after the recent tragedy in Roanoke, where the, uh, the deranged guy shot yeah. the reporter yes. and the cameraman on, mm -hmm. on, Bob was all over the newspaper saying, we don't need any new gun laws. We just need to enforce the laws that are already on the books. Oh. And let me quote him, paraphrase quote, the federal government does a terrible job at enforcing these federal gun laws. Well, if we looked a little deeper into this, we find that we have gutted the ATF. Right. There's at least five things we can do with the ATF right now without changing any new gun laws. Number one, we can make the ATF director not subject to a Senate appointment. Mm -hmm. Since the Republicans did that in 2004, only one ATF director in 12 years has actually been confirmed by the U.S. Senate. When you take an organization and you leave it leaderless with an ad hoc, with an acting director, they're never going to have the kind of enforcement that you want. Let's make the ATF director simply an appointee of the Attorney General, not subject to confirmation, and give it leadership. Number two, let's repeal the TRD amendments, going back to 2004 also, which restrict the use of trace data. Uh, trace data is an incredibly important tool to be able to figure out which guns are used in crimes and to lead them back to the gun shops from which they were sold. Number three, let's require annual inspections of every federally uh, licensed gun shop in America. One of the amazing statistics, there are more federally uh, certified gun shops in America than there are McDonald's. I think it's over 70,000. Yeah. Um, number four, let's make sure that if we can do <coughs> annual inspections of each one of these gun shops that we have the workforce to do it. Right now the ATF is desperately shorthanded to do the job that they're assigned to do by federal law. And finally, um, Congress has restricted the ability of federal gun shops to keep inventories. Um, and this is incredibly important. You have a big inventory, you miss 20 guns or 100 guns, no one knows because they're restricted from keeping those inventories. There's much that we can do right now that doesn't add a, a new level um, that just enforces existing law. But in keeping with the refusal to have a vote on no fly, no buy, refusal to have a vote on closing the background check loop, there is legislation before us that many of you have signed the ATF Enforcement Act, that once again is not getting a hearing in House Judiciary, is not getting a markup, is not getting any play on the floor. So even the things they say, let's, let's enforce the laws that exist, doesn't happen. There's so much more that we can do. And thank all of you for being part of this overnight and extended effort to make sure that we continue to demand what the American citizens want. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.